So today we're going to look at two processes that can occur with particles and their antiparticles. The first thing we're going to look at is what's called pair production. Let's imagine, for example, we have a gamma ray traveling. This cam gamma ray can spontaneously produce two particles. So for example, it can produce a particle, uh, a positron, and its antiparticle, which would be an electron. It could also produce a proton and an antiproton. Um, now it needs to produce two because well we need a charge to be conserved here so that's why we have our uh, particle and our antiparticle um, and also we need momentum to be conserved in this case so we need to have a um, an energy this gamma ray needs to have an energy sufficient to produce the mass of each of these right or its energy equivalence of each of these so let's figure out what's the minimum energy of this photon that we need. So the, um, the mass of this and the mass of this are the same. They're equal to each other. So we have something that we call rest energy. And the rest energy is essentially, if we were to convert all the mass of an electron, how much energy would it be? And for this, we're just going to simply use um, Einstein's equation e equals mc squared. So we could do this for an electron. The mass of an electron is 911, 10 to the negative 31st, and then the speed of light, of course, is 10 to the 8th. Uh, we'll go ahead and square that out. So when we calculate that, we get about 8.2 times 10 to the negative 14 joules. So this would be the rest energy of a positron and the rest energy of an electron because, well, they have the same exact mass, right? Now, um, what we're looking at is the minimum energy for this to happen. So we're going to assume that these are essentially have a, a velocity of zero. Now, if they start having greater velocities, we'd have to also take into account the kinetic energy of each of these. All right. So let's go ahead and see. Well, it's, you can see it's pretty easy. If we need this energy, essentially the energy of our gamma ray, to equal the energy of the electron plus the energy of the positron. And so since these are both the same, the energy of our photon or gamma ray needs to be twice that. So about 16.4 times 10 to the negative 14 joules. Okay, and of course, if we wanted to convert that to a frequency, we could just simply use our E to equals HF Let's go ahead and do that now, I guess. 10 to the negative 14, oops, equals, okay, Planck's constant, 6.626, 10 to the negative 34 times our frequency. And we can go ahead and calculate the frequency of that. See, I did do that. So our frequency is about 2.5 times 10 to the 20 hertz. So again, you can see how high this is. That's why this will only happen with gamma rays. Um, or higher. Notice if this was a proton antiproton, you would even need more energy for that to happen. So the next process is called annihilation. Anni annihilation. And essentially this is um, pretty much the opposite of what we just talked about. So for example, if we have an electron traveling this way and a positron traveling this way, the two particles can collide with each other and annihilate each other. Now this can only happen again with a particle and its antiparticle um, because we need to convert, um, conserve charge, so a negative and a positive. Um, it could happen with a proton and an antiproton also. So in this situation, one slight difference is, let's say we produce a gamma ray. So these are going to annihilate. All the mass is going to turn into energy, and that energy is going to essentially turn into a photon. So here's one of the differences. This has a momentum. This has a momentum. Notice that their momentum here is essentially zero. So to conserve momentum, you would actually produce two gamma rays. So these gamma rays would be the same, the same exact energy, and uh, they would be essentially moving in opposite directions in this case. Okay, so that's kind of the concept, and we would just kind of solve this um, in reverse as we just did. So the energies of this, again, we noted was um, 8.2 times 10 to the negative 14 joules, 8.2 
times 10 to the negative 14 joules. Now one thing we have to note is these themselves are moving, right? To get this collision to happen, they need to have a kinetic energy. So to do this truly, you'd have to take the kinetic energy of each, so kinetic energy of the positron plus the kinetic energy of the electron, plus the rest mass energy of these, which would be 2 times the 8.2 times 10 to the negative 14. This would be our starting initial energy of these two. Now one thing you should remember, this is 1 half mv squared, right, and this was mc squared. If v is less, significantly less than c, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th, then this value is going to be kind of negligible, right? So even if this was pretty fast, let's say 10 to the 5th, because of this 10 to the 8th and then squaring it out, this is going to kind of dominate. So for our purposes, we're just going to assume that this is going to be 0. Ke is going to be approximately 0 um, with respect, maybe not 0, but it's going to be small. So let's just say very much smaller than that rest energy of the two. Okay, so anyways, let's figure out, go ahead and figure out what the gamma rays would be. Well, the gamma rays would be essentially the opposite of what we just did, right, in that previous pair production problem, except there's two this time. So the total energy here would be 16.4 times 10 to the negative 14 joules of the, the two, uh, the electron and the positron. Um, so we'll just divide that by two, and notice what you get is the energy of each gamma ray, so this would be the energy of each gamma ray, has to be exactly the same as the rest energy of the electron and the positron. Okay, and if we again calculated the frequency E equals HF, we could figure out the frequency as well. And notice the frequency is going to be exactly half as well. And so last time we got 2.5, so this would be about 1.25, 10 to the 20th hertz. Right? Now again, if these velocities start to get high, let's say 10 to the 7th, uh, maybe even 10 to the 8th, right? then you're going to have to take into account that kinetic energy, and that would adjust this slightly. In fact, the energy then of these would be greater, as well as the frequencies.